Welcome everyone to the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call on Wednesday, November 11, 2015. I'm Neil Caden. I'm your facilitator uh, or moderator for today, and uh, uh, we will get started. So uh, I pasted the Etherpad link into the chat in the Ether in uh, the chat of this big, big blue button session. So please uh, please sign up over there. And we'll start going through the agenda. So first of all, welcome. Um, this meeting is being recorded, and it will be published to the Aperio uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I guess the next thing is project updates and announcements. Uh, so um, I will try and think of things. But in the meantime, while I'm thinking, does anyone else have uh, announcements? Okay, now, all right, well, let me just mention a few things then. I was gonna look up something, but uh, here we go. Uh, so uh, I think uh, many of you uh, know that we have announced a Sakai camp January 25th and 26th in Orlando, Florida. Um, I believe that's the right date. So let me look at calendar. Yep. Uh, it's a Monday and Tuesday. We expect them to be full days. So we, uh, for people, it's it's. This is sponsored by the PMC, the Sakai Project Management Committee. I think we're expecting order of magnitude 20, 30 people there. But it is an open meeting, talking about Sakai Lab and talking about the future of Sakai, brainstorming, maybe some working sessions, possibly possibly some things. Um, uh, even going into Wednesday morning, though I don't know if there's any, going to be anything planned for that, and probably a team building day on that Sunday. So it's recommended that people come uh, uh, on the 20, uh, you know, get there like on Saturday the 23rd so they, and leave on the 27th so they can get the full Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I see a thing about the virtual conference. Thank you, Terry, for mentioning that. Yeah, thank you to our organizer. Thank you to the people who presented. Thank you to the sponsors. Uh, and of course, to people showing up. It was a really tremendous uh, event. I don't know, Wilma, do you want to uh, mention anything about some of the stats from the virtual conference? Um, actually, we had um, over 400 attendees enrolled. So uh, we definitely topped our numbers from last year. And um, as far as uh, funds collected, we made about $1,000 more than we did last year that can go back toward Sakai development. Um, the, I think the total after Eventbrite fees was um, 13500 and something. So that'll actually go back into Sakai development, which is great. And um, I don't have other stats yet. The evaluation is open through, um, I think, 11.55 p.m. tonight. So we'll have a little bit more feedback once uh, we review the evaluation results. But so far, all of the feedback that I've heard has been really positive. So really thrilled that it went well, and it seems like everybody enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for leading that uh, for the second year in a row. It was really tremendous, and I, I think I can speak on behalf of the community that we all really appreciate that. I know it's obviously I'm part of the team and other people are part of the team and we collectively do a lot of work, but I really appreciate your leadership um, quite a bit. Thank you. Um, let's see, I was also gonna mention the Aperio conference finally got announced. Uh, um, let's see, I believe I have the details of that. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, so you should mark your calendars for the uh, Perio Conference, which is going to be in New York City. Uh, let me get the details here. Here we go. Um, it's 2016. It's uh, May 22nd through 25th, so it's a little earlier than we're accustomed to. Um, and again, it's in New York, uh, so that should be pretty pretty exciting one. I think uh, it's two days of a Perio Conference, and there's a day before that of uh, like an open uh, more of an open theme. So it's not just even a, a perio. Um, I should have that in front of me. Where's the, uh, from Ian, let me get more details from that. Um, I, open perio, here we go. So it's preceded by a one day event. So it's the 24th and 25th is the Aperio portion and there's a one day event the day before on the 23rd of May called the Open Summit, an opportunity for open initiatives and in education to share best practices, state of the art and strategic directions, 
Um, so it's it's much more open. Uh, it's not just a Perio, and in, it's uh, being hosted in conjunction with the Open Source Initiative, which is a wonderful initiative, uh, and uh, that is complementary to a lot of what we're doing in, in a Perio. So I encourage you to think about that. And uh, let's see other announcements. Um, feels like there's some other things. Uh, not much to report on Sakai 11. Uh, we're still trying to get the Gradebook uh, NG merged into master. Uh, there's a proposal because we're trying to, the, the main hold up there is we're figuring out what the best way of managing issues like um, bug reports are. The Gradebook NG has been using something called GitHub issues. GitHub is where we're storing our source code repository now, but we use Jira for our bug, reposit, bug fixing a repository, our bug tracking and feature tracking. and so we're trying to figure out, once we figure out which of those uh, uh, issue tracking uh, tools we're going to use, which we anticipate deciding by this, uh, this end of this week, then, then the path should be clear to get Gradebook NG uh, merged into master. Once we get Gradebook NG merged into master, give the community some time to have some burn in and review the uh, Gradebook NG and our main Sakai, and then we should be able to come up with a more firm schedule uh, and I, I should present a little bit more on that uh, when we get a little further into it. Um, uh, had some great submissions in the Sakai uh, skin contest at the Sakai virtual conference and we're going to be looking at some of those entries and seeing if we want to use any of those ideas uh, to enhance Sakai 11 even more. Um, and let's see, I'm trying to think if there's any other announcements. Uh, Oh, oh, and there's. A, I wanted to mention that we have, um, you know, we're using a lot of uh, Google groups for Aperio. Um, one of the groups that's not getting utilized very much yet, uh, I think has a lot of potential, is, uh, is there's an open, um, let me get that URL. There's an open one, let's see, open, open. There we go. So it's open at aperio.org, and uh, this is an open one where you can pretty much post anything you want, uh, so you don't have to think about, well, does it fit as an announcement, or do I need to go through Niels, the community coordinator, or where do I post this thing? Because there's a lot of, there may be uh, some issues where, uh, or announcements you want to make where you're not clear post, and, and this could be, a, this is like a water cooler. And um, I encourage people to sign up for that. Uh, one of the things I was going to post, um, I've been playing around with, um, Twitter and a product called Zapier, which allows you to have automatic notifications. So, for example, uh, you could, uh, I'm setting up a process, it's, it's working already for both the Perio Twitter account and Sakai Twitter account, where you could subscribe to one of these email groups, and then any time that a Perio posts a tweet or any time Sakai posts a tweet, you would get an automatic notification. And what that would do is allow, and it's, this is voluntary to join, and what that would do is allow you to, uh, you know, retweet, and retweeting is how things kind of take off in social media. So. Think about joining open at aperio.org, which is uh, for any type of discussion, any type of announcement, um, and uh, and then you know I'll be making some announcements more about these Twitter groups that you can join if you'd like. So I think that covers everything I can think of. I hope I didn't take too much time. Are there any other announcements or questions about things going on in the community? All right, super. So the uh, next thing is the, uh, let's just talk about the agenda a little bit. There's a Jira of the Week, uh, and I volunteered to present something, and I'll do that in just a second. And then we're going to have uh, a demonstration on the Now Comment tool that's being used at University of Virginia, and Matt Burgess is going to be presenting that. And then we'll talk about uh, future meeting. We'll leave some time for future meeting topics so we can continue to schedule um, meeting ideas of use to, to this, uh, this group. So I guess I'll jump into it. I'm going to close out my webcam here, but I think I will do screen sharing. And uh, this was an issue that um, actually looks like it has gotten traction on the Sakai dev list, and I believe Texas State is going to fix the issue. Uh, but since I said I would demo it, I will go ahead and demo it. Uh, let's see. Do screen sharing. Where are you? Oh, Matt, I think, oh, I can't do screen sharing because I think you're doing screen sharing. Oh, thank you.
All right. So I have uh, Sakai 10.5 version running locally on my computer here. And I'll try and make this a really quick demo. Um, so in the forums tool, so what the issue that came up was that there's a, f a feature called ranks in, in forums. And apparently some um, institutions are having uh, performance issues with running this tool, with using the ranks tool. And the question was, well, should we have an option to turn it off? Should we, I think there is now an option where you can turn off the use of ranks. There's a property that's being been added or being added um, and or and does anyone really want to use the ranks tools as something where you know it has thousands of lines of code so maybe we just want to rip it out if nobody's using it Texas State stepped up and they are using it and they want to fix it so I think that that probably is going to get fixed but let me just show you what the ranks feature is and see Hey, Neil, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but I think we may have lost your audio. Got cut off. Did uh oh? So did you all get to see? Um. Oh, you would like to know what I'm saying right now. <laughs> I guess I got cut off. I'm so sorry. 
Um, I'll try and do it really, really quickly. The idea is, um, what did you get cut off? Can someone give me a sense of, we saw you didn't hear any of, any of it? You didn't hear any of it? Oh, man. Yeah, unfortunately, Neil, I think your audio went out almost as soon as you started. So we did get to see everything, and that was kind of cool. But unfortunately, we didn't get to hear very much of it at all. Oh, it's too bad. It was one of the most brilliant soliloquies I think I've ever done in my life, and now it's not going to be captured for us. <laughs> Um, all right, well, I'll give you a brief, I'll talk really quickly about it again. I should be able to do it in just a minute. So as instructor, you can um, set up these things called ranks. You can use basically two different uh, criteria. One is you can do it any members of the site whatsoever, um, and you might use it for something like, you know, use case might be, uh, let's say you've uh, assigned uh, subject matter experts in your class or in your research site, and so you want to have particular individual to their posts, or let's say you want to keep track of the number of posts and recognize um, individuals who have posted a certain level, like you know two times or three times or four times. So those are the two criteria. You can pick one of those two. You can also add a little icon, in, which visually makes it a much easier to see. You just have to create a little 35 by 35 pixel deal, and that's what I've done. I've created two different um, images. You give them the, any name you want. So one I've called heavy poster, which is anyone who's posted at least two times. And the other one is TAs, and I manually added in the TAs from this course. These images um, are probably copyrighted, so don't please don't copy them or use them. I just, they're images I found on my computer to show as examples. Um, so they're, they're kind of meaningless in this context, um, and I'm not much of a graphic artist uh, at this point, at least in my life. Maybe someday that will change. But uh, So that's the criteria, and then once you do that, um, so the TA one, it just has to be that at TA, and here's the criteria, that this teaching assistant post, and um, so I did have that teaching assistant post, and so when you go into the discussion, and you go into a, a conversation thread, there's the name of the group, TAs, as you can see that having an icon really visually helps it pop, so if you had a whole bunch, of, you can imagine if you had a whole bunch of posts, and you wanted to pick out, you know, who has one of these special um, uh, uh, designations either by the number of times they posted or, or by just the instructor picking them individually as wanting to highlight their, you know, the fact that they're posting, whatever the role, uh, that's how you pick it out. So that's what that feature is. Did that, I think, pretty quickly. Um, I think the recording is probably getting audio. I've actually had a problem. Um, you know, with my audio, which I need to, I, I, I need to talk with Blindside Networks a little bit. It seems like every so often, um, the audio just cuts out, and I have to re reset it. So, sorry about that. Um, it is in Sakai 10, Louisa, and the issue, uh, hopefully my audio captured earlier, is that um, some institutions are using it, but some are finding problems with their performance. In other words, it would slow down the forms tool, and so, a contribution has been made that you could turn off this feature if you're not using it, but it also looks like there's uh, some interest in fixing it. Uh, Texas State, I believe, is their developers are working on fixing the issue, and they've been talking on a dev list and saying, hey, I think this is the problem, and getting feedback. So there's, um, uh, so there's reason to believe that the feature will start performing better. So if you have it in Sakai 10, you may not want to use it at the moment, because of the performance issues, um, unless you know how to manage them or with your commercial affiliate, and if they know how to manage them. But part of the idea here is, is just seeing it, you know, the interest in the community, and I guess showing a feature that you might not all know about, apparently you don't, so. I'm gonna stop screen sharing that. So any other questions? You're, you're welcome. So, uh, well, if there's no no questions or comments then. If you have any, feel free to you know ping me offline, um, and we will move on to uh, Matt's presentation now. Take it away, Matt. Okay. Thanks, Neil. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Depending <laughs> on where you guys are, can everybody hear me? Okay. Okay, great. So I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit today about NowComment, which is a third-party tool that UVA has been using with its local instance of Sakai for the last several years. So we're going to talk a little bit about the tool, 
what the tool is for those of you who aren't familiar with it, what kinds of things it can do, and then I'll do a little live demo, show you guys a little bit of how we use the tool and also how I use the tool myself as an instructor. Before I started in my current role with ITS here at UVA, I was a graduate student and an instructor in the Religious Studies Department here. And in one of my courses, I used the tool pretty extensively to allow the students to work with some more difficult texts and some more difficult documents in a way that we would not have been able to do otherwise. So with the grateful permission of my students who have agreed to allow themselves to become part of the public record here, I'm going to show you a little bit of what we did when we used the tool in 2013. So I've got some slides here first that will give us a little bit of background before we move into the demo so you can just follow along with those. I see in the chat that Jennifer is still not hearing anything. Can the rest of you guys hear me okay? Okay. So you might want to check your settings, Jennifer. So first of all, just a little bit of general background on Now Comment and what it is. Uh, what it is is a tool that allows registered users to discuss and annotate documents online. And we're going to see a little bit of exactly how that works and what that looks like in just a minute. It is a third-party tool. As I mentioned earlier, it's produced by a public interest organization that's based here in Charlottesville, Virginia, which is also where UVA is located. It's called Fairness.com LLC. It's run by a local guy named Dan Dernberg, who is a really nice guy, just a guy who was interested in creating a kind of tool that could work inside LMSs but could also stand on its own that would allow people to have conversations and comment on texts in different ways. So it's a really cool little product. It was first integrated into UVA Collab, which is what we call Sakai here at UVA in 2009. And if you want more information about Now Comment, they have a very nice website. They also have some introductory videos that you can watch that are available at their main website, which is nowcomment.com. They also have a nicely annotated list of FAQs, which is available at nowcomment.com slash FAQ. Other things that you might need to know about Now Comment, it supports Microsoft Word file types and it also supports HTML pages, but it does not initially support PDF files, which is something important that you'll want to know if you're planning to work with it for the first time because I would anticipate this is a question that you would get from your faculty. PDF files must be converted uh, through a program like Abby Fine Reader into a text file in order to be imported into the tool. And I think you'll see a little bit about why that's the case when we take a look at the live demo. By default, documents that are uploaded to Now Comment are private, uh, which means that they are restricted to the groups with which they're associated. So if you're working with Now Comment within Sakai, for example, and you associate a document with a particular course, with a particular roster, that document is only going to be visible on Now Comment to people in that roster. And finally, in addition to making comments on content, uh, users can also suggest revisions to documents, and when they do that, the uploader, the person who originally posted that document, can accept those revisions with a single click, and when the uploader does so, the document is automatically updated for all of the users. So that's a nice feature if you're working on a group editing project, for example. Now, just a few very basic and general details about how Knock Comment works within UVA Collab. I was hoping to have Matthew Hall, our technical lead, available to talk with us about this in a little more detail. Unfortunately, he had a few other things come up and wasn't available today. So I'm going to give you some very basic details. And then if you guys have more questions about how we make Now Comment work here, you're welcome to email us and I can put you in touch with Matthew and some of our other developers directly. For us, Now Comment is available in UVA Collab via a link tool integration. And for those of you who may not be familiar with LinkTool, as I wasn't before I started in this present role, it's a kind of precursor of LTI that I believe was originally developed by Rutgers in some of the old Sakai documentation that we have. It's called the Rutgers Link Tool. So that's how it is available within UVA Collab via LinkTool, not via 
LTI. And LTI integration has reportedly been implemented in Canvas and Moodle. We don't run either Canvas or Moodle anywhere at UVA, so I can't confirm that myself. I did talk about this a little bit with Tricia Gordon, and I know that in the past year or two, UVA made some attempts to get the LTI integration to work with UVA Collab, and those initial attempts were not successful. So for the moment, at least, we are continuing to run Now Comment via our previous link tool integration. And the integration that we have here is a partnership uh, between Now Comment itself, all of us here at UVA Collab, and another group within UVA called SHANTI. Uh, SHANTI stands for the Sciences, Humanities, and Arts Network of Technological Initiatives. It's just another group of scholars and developers and support staff within UVA uh, that makes some additional digital tools available campus-wide. And again, if you have more um, interest uh, if you'd like to learn more about the technical aspects of our integration, more than I can tell you, uh, since I spend most of my time working on front-end support and instructional design, feel free to email us at collab-support at virginia.edu anytime, and I'm happy to put you in touch uh, with our development team. We have four outstanding developers who work with us here, and they will be happy to give you any of the information that you might need. We'll talk a little bit more about the things that you can do with Now Comment when we move to the demo portion, uh, but just a brief textual overview of some of the things that you can do. In terms of comment options, you can annotate documents at the sentence level or at the paragraph level. Uh, you can create new comments yourself or you can respond to previous comments. Uh, you can also, as I mentioned just a moment ago, suggest or accept document revisions. Uh, in terms of display options, you can display the text that you're working with and all of the various comments in some different ways. You can display the conversation in line or you can display the conversation in parallel panes, uh, kind of like a study Bible or an annotated text where you have a main text in one pane and the comments in another pane. Uh, the comments are sortable and they can be viewed in full or in a summary form if you don't want to view all of the text of all of the comments initially while you're working. And here, just a couple of screenshots about getting started, since I didn't want to build a now comment bridge from scratch here, since I didn't want to take up too much of our time. When you add the now comment tool to a site within UVA Collab for the first time, this is the screen that you get. Um, you get a getting started screen that has one button on it, a very simple, our faculty like simple, so this works really well for us. And that button says create bridge to now comment. When you click on that button, it creates a bridge, and then you click OK, and your Collab site is now linked with Now Comment. This integration does take a few minutes, in my experience, to show up on Now Comment's server. So in other words, it's going to take a few minutes before your Collab site and your roster that's associated with Collab site appears as a group within Now Comment, but once those few minutes are up and the server has refreshed and your group has appeared there, you can associate documents with Now Comment, which will then allow your students or your other collaborators to go into your site and start. Now maybe I'll pause for just a moment and see if anybody has any initial questions. And if nobody has any initial questions, then we'll move on to the demo portion and I can show you guys how some of this works up close and personal.
Sorry, guys, it was just quiet because I was waiting to see if anybody had any questions, and I was also setting up my screen share here. So you guys should now be able to see my screen. Can you see it? Awesome. Okay. So now you can see a demo site that I've set up just for our session today. And so you can see that when you click on the Now Comment tool, now that the bridge has been created, the link has been created between your site and your roster and Now Comment, you see that there is a place for documents to be added. And when documents added that are associated with this group, they will show up right here in this list in the Now Comment tool. So if we go into Now Comment and click on a particular document, for example, this portion of the Epic of Gilgamesh here, and we decide that we really want our group to comment on this part of the Epic of Gilgamesh and tell us what kinds of things they think about it. Maybe we have some specific questions that we want to ask them about it. All we need to do is click right here on the Invite link And when you invite people, if you click on groups, a list of all of the groups of which you are a member will show up right there in the groups box on the right side of the screen. And the groups that are associated with rosters will show up automatically. And so you can see here that now comment, which is the site that I created today and the site to which I just added the now comment tool is now available. So I can select it and click invite. And now I see that invitations to the document Epic of Gilgamesh were sent. When we return to our now comment site here and refresh the page, we can see that the document has now been added to our collab site, which means that site participants can now come into the site, they can click on the now comment tool, and they can click on this document and they can be taken directly to the document where they can make their comments. And I see Terry's question here, you will have previously uploaded desired documents. You can do it in whatever order you prefer, Terry. Um, you can upload the documents now, uh, now that your group has been created and invite the group afterwards, it really doesn't matter. You can do it either way. So as you can see, uploading documents, getting started is actually pretty easy. Um, so now that I've given you just a brief overview of how that works and how to do that, I wanted to take just a few minutes to show you a little bit about how this actually worked uh, in an actual course. So let me show you a part of a course that I taught in the fall semester of 2013 when I was a graduate student in the Religious Studies Department here at UVA. I was a teaching fellow in a very large lecture course um, RELC 1210, which is the university's introduction to Hebrew Bible. So the students in that class do a lot of the Hebrew Bible, about 75% of it in one semester. So it's a very big course that deals with a lot of material. It usually enrolls somewhere between 180 and 240 students. It's a big course, and in a big course like that, there aren't always opportunities for students to have a lot of discussion with one another, and there aren't always opportunities for students to engage in some texts that really require a little bit of assistance, a little bit of help to work with. And so one of the ways that our teaching team that was working with this course decided to address that issue was to use Now Comment. And to break the students up into small groups, uh, we used groups of about four to five students and to assign them particular texts that might be more difficult, possibly too difficult to work through on one's own, uh, so that they could get together and have these interactive discussions with one another. So for example, and I'll give this just a moment to load here. 
One of the readings that we assigned for discussion section meetings was a very famous article by a British anthropologist named Mary Douglas called The Abominations of Leviticus, which is a section from a larger book that she wrote called Purity and Danger. It's a very influential article. It's been very important in the fields of anthropology and history and religious studies. But it's a pretty dense and difficult article, and it would be a difficult article for first and second year students, which make up the majority of this large lecture course, to work through on their own. So what the teaching team did was to create a DocX a Microsoft Word document version of this particular chapter from Douglas's book, The Abomination of Leviticus, upload that to Word comment, and then assign some particular questions that we wanted our students to address together. Uh, for example, we wanted them to look at this document and identify what the students felt Douglas's thesis actually was. And so the students, as part of this assignment, then got to dive into the article together, make various comments, try to identify the thesis and get into discussions about that. And they really got into it. And many of my students came to me and said that this article was an article that they could not have dealt with uh, on their own, that it would have been a little too dense, a little bit too advanced for them to process on their own. But by being able to break it apart piece by piece, uh, make their own comments, ask their own questions uh, as they worked with the document, and then see what kinds of insights uh, their other fellow classmates were making at the same time, they were able to really get a lot more out of it. And so you can see that there are already some comments that have been posted here. And you see up here at the top that there are different ways in which we can view these comments. So here, right now, we are in two pane mode. So you see the main text, Douglas's chapter here on the left, and you see the student comments here on the right. However, you can also switch to a combined view by clicking the combined radio button here at the top. And when you do that, you switch to an inline view. And the comments should be visible here by uh, clicking a particular sentence or a particular passage. You can also decide whether you want to view the comments in full, as we are right now, or if you want to view the comments as summary views, which will then show only the student's name or the poster's name and the title that they have given to their particular comments. Now Comment asks that you give a title for your comment or a brief summary for your comment for this reason, so that you can switch to a summary view and show just what the posters felt was the nutshell version of their comments. You can also sort the comments by clicking the sorted radio button here, and it will give you a variety of options. So you can view all of the comments associated with a particular person uh, by sorting by last name or first name. You can also sort the comments in time order, and you're also able to tag your comments, uh, to associate your comments with particular keywords, and if you do that, then you can sort by those tags as well. So this is a tool that has worked really well um, in various classes at UVA, uh, particularly classes that are a little more text-based, uh, classes that work with documents. I know there are classes in the Islamic Studies Department, for example, that have used this tool to create a kind of annotated Quran where the students will look at particular passages and then they make their comments about history and about context and about the things that they are learning in the class and how they're applying them to those passages. So if you're trying to create any kind of annotated text, if you're working with any kind of literature and you want to create an annotated version of that literature, for example, this tool works really, really well for that. Uh, also, it will support image uploads. So if you want to work in art or architecture, for example, and break down and engage in criticism of a particular artistic object, this tool can work really well for that as well. 
And if you're just trying to create a forum to have a discussion section and you don't necessarily have the resources or the time or the money uh, to have that discussion section, that smaller group of students meet in a classroom every single week, this is a great way to produce at least some of that same effect. Uh, so it's worked really well for us uh, in a lot of different classes. And again, I hope this has been interesting to you guys. And now I'll step aside and we can talk about some questions. And again, if you have any additional questions about technical aspects or specific aspects of how we've made this work at UVA, please feel free to email us at collab-support at virginia.edu and we're happy to talk to you about it. So thanks guys, really appreciate it. Okay, so I do see some questions coming in on the chat. Um, I see some questions uh, from Terry that the documents are on uh, the Now Comet site, not on the computer. Uh, that's correct. Uh, they are hosted uh, on the Now Comet server. So they are not local documents. That's correct. I see that Terry also has some questions about copyright issues. Um, and those are good issues um, and things that would need to be considered in consultation with your institution's legal department, most likely. We frequently consult with the Office of General Counsel for copyright issues, for example. But I would say that at least in the context of a semester, uh, in the context of a particular course, you would almost certainly fall within the fair use, educational use exemption to the copyright law, at least as far as I'm aware. I see another question from Terry. Does it allow attachments in the comments area uh, for documentation of comments? Uh, no, as far as I'm aware, Terry, it does not allow for attachments in the comments area. You can't attach uh, something there, at least not yet. Although that might be a good feature to suggest to now comment. As far as I know, their team is pretty small, but their team is uh, pretty responsive and very interested in hearing feedback and very interested in expanding the tool and adding new features. Uh, so that would be a great thing um, to suggest to them. I see a comment from Adam. Uh, this might be useful for a writing center to comment on students' drafts, but would need to be one-to-one -one, uh, student to tutor. Uh, and yes, Adam, uh, the tool can support that. Uh, you can upload a particular file. For example, uh, the student could upload a file and invite the tutor and only the tutor. Uh, to participate uh, in editing that file or vice versa. The tutor could upload the file and invite the student to participate. And in fact, students could do that purely through Now Comment. They would not need to have an integration with the LMS necessarily in order to do that, although you could do it through the LMS as well. But absolutely, you can upload a single document and invite whomever you choose, even if that person is a single individual. Uh, Louisa has a question about the Roster Association, which is a good question uh, and a question that I am not equipped to answer, unfortunately, from a technical perspective. But I can talk with Matthew about how exactly LinkTool uh, calls the roster data and shares the roster data with now comment in order to create that group, and we can find that out. That's something that we can find out. And Louisa also asks, is the group and now comment the same uh, as the class in Sakai? And if I'm understanding your question correctly, Louisa, I think that you're asking, do you mean that the group that's been created in now comment are, are its members the same as the roster uh, in Sakai? And the answer to that is yes. And I see another question from Adam here uh, regarding Working exclusively through Now Comment, does Now Comment leverage uh, your authentication system? Um, if not, it's useful to have Sakai as a conduit. It is definitely uh, useful to have Sakai uh, as a conduit. Um, now Comment allows for separate standalone accounts, uh, which you can create yourself and which use just a standard password authentication, as far as I'm aware. Um, so you can do it either way. The accounts are password protected. 
through now comment, but I agree um, that the authentication system that we use for Sakai is more robust than the standalone system within now comment as far as I'm aware. And so it would be nice uh, to use Sakai as a conduit as we do. And I see that Adam has typed TYVM, which is an acronym that I do not know, which means that I am not cool. So I am sorry, Adam, that I don't know what that means. I probably should know what that means. But I'm glad that you think things are interesting. Oh, of course, that makes perfect sense. Well, thank you, Adam. <laughs> So if anybody has any other uh, thoughts or comments or questions, uh, I'm happy to take them. But otherwise, I'll hand things back over to Neil and we can talk for a few minutes about our plans for our next few meetings together. Thanks, Matt. I uh, appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we have, uh, I also wanted to mention that today is Veterans Day, so it might be worth taking just a moment to, uh, for those of us who want to, you know, thank uh, veterans. Well, that's the U.S. thing, so uh, so it's a special day to honor uh, folks who have served. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, let's see, back to the agenda. Um, right now, at the moment, we don't have anything scheduled for next, uh, next week. Uh, then the week after is Thanksgiving break. Um, and then we don't have anything scheduled for a couple meetings after that. So we could take a look at additional items. If anyone has uh, any um, present anything they want to present to the group or any discussions you want to lead, it doesn't have to be in a presentation format. It could also be in a panel discussion or it could just be a, putting a question out to the group for discussion. This is a, you know, really your meeting and how you want to use time. And if we don't have agenda items, we can certainly cancel the meetings uh, that we don't have um, agendas for, and I'm sure you could all use the time plenty of other things as well. Um, so, looking at additional items, uh, loading in university pictures into Sakai profiles was is one thing somebody suggested. I don't know if there's anyone who would volunteer to share how their university uh, loads uh, pictures into Sakai profiles. Um, so think about that if your university does. Does anyone's university on the call use that type of feature? Oh, Stephen, you do. Do you want to uh, share kind of what you guys do at a future meeting? Do you want to see if there's somebody from your institution uh, from Wake Forest who, who would be available to speak about how that works? See if they'd like, they wouldn't mind uh, if they'd be open to you know, jumping in on these calls. Uh, okay, gotcha. Thank you for checking. Um, let's see, so another one is a wish list for Charles Hedrick, for Chuck Hedrick on lessons. Uh, my favorite JIRA could not just focus on lessons or others, so that actually could be a separate topic. So uh, Adam, I think, put this, I don't know if that was uh, which Adam that was. I think we have a couple of them. One today. Is that you, Adam uh, H? So Terry mentioned that there's a group uh, maybe interested in uh, the checklist tool from the University of Dayton. Um, just so that you all know that there's a good announcement as well is that the uh, there will be all the recordings from those sessions will be uh, you know, will be posted shortly, and we'll make that announcement so you can you can look at it there. Um, and then, if you wanted follow up on here, um, that might be good. But it might be a good place to start is to look at the existing recording. So we'll definitely announce it. Let's see. Oh yes, Adam said I suggested a grab bag of Jiras. Uh, not critical. Yeah. So I don't know if people have an interest in that. Um, you know. Uh, Adam does. If others have an interest, if we had two or three people interested in a grab bag of Jiras, then we probably have enough for, uh, you know, for a session. So does anyone else have an interest in kind of bringing up some of the Jiras or some of the issues or some of the features that you would like to see? But I see a lot of interest in the checklist tool. Um, like I said, I mean, we can certainly invite data to present, but I was just curious if maybe it would make sense to share the, uh, 
the recording from the virtual conference and you could you know watch it that way and maybe come back and discuss. A lot of interest in the checklist tool, cool. It sounds like there might be some interest in, in JIRAs, and it doesn't have to be just JIRAs, like if there's features uh, or improvements to Sakai that you wanted, I think you could just, uh, it doesn't have to be reported in a JIRA yet. We could certainly do something like that. Um, leap phase two, I know Louisa and I are still talking about about how to move forward on that um, and getting the, the group together. Okay, so JIRA and features would be a great topic. Ah, okay. Jiras and features, so there is some interest in that, uh, several people. So that sounds like there might be enough to do. Um, which date uh, do you want to do it for next week, or do we need a couple of weeks for people to think about it, maybe do it in December? Thank you, Wilma, for the link to the uh, checklist video from the Sakai Virtual Conference. Yeah. So I'm going to pick it for next week. So Jira and feature. Uh, uh, Jira and feature interests. I presume for Sakai. Uh, this, you know, we still have a pretty strong Sakai, but that's the other thing to remember is we still also have the Aperio aspect of the meeting. But let's let's try that for next week and see how that works out. So anyone who hasn't who's uh, spoken up, you know, please pick at least one item or one area of interest, and we'll do that kind of a roundtable thing, and we can just kind of go around and whoever shows up, just I'll just we'll just ask, say, you know, what's what's your contribution or what. Uh, what you would you like us to take a look at or feature you'd like us to think about? So for next week, we'll do that. Um, Sakai podcasts and polls. Uh, I'm not sure what about Sakai podcasts and polls. Uh, I think I could probably, I probably know enough where I could demo how that works. Um, oh, I see Louisa says she'd love to hear about open badges. Does anyone have, uh, uh, do other people have an interest in open badges? Does anyone have any expertise in that? Those are two separate questions. So if you have an interest in open badges, it would be good to see if that's the case. And if you have expertise, so we can have someone, you know, kind of point us in the right direction for some discussion. The JIRA on open badges from 2013. Terry is interested in badges. Does anyone have an implementation currently in badges? So there's some interest, but I, I don't know if we have a lot of knowledge. Where could we get somebody to present, so on badges, wonder. These are open badges, okay. Hmm. Okay, well, let's, let's keep, let's see if we can figure that out. Uh, um, so it does sound like there's some interest there. Let's see. Um, so anyway, Sakai so Podcast and Tools, I'm not, again, I'm not sure what that's about, uh, whether uh, I could probably do a demo of Sakai so Podcast and Tools, but I'm not sure if that's what that, that's really getting at. If anyone has any ideas about what that is or what's needed, you know, or if you want me to demo, I'm happy to demo, or find somebody else who wants to demo, that's totally cool. Uh, Third-party LTI demos. So, um, if anyone's using any of these tools, it sounds like uh, if you would be willing to step up to do a demo, that would be really cool. Nopto, uh, Piazza, Blackboard Collaborate, Kaltura Media Gallery, and these are all tools that plug in using the IMS LTI <clears throat> spec. Think about that. Um, maybe I'll put a. It might be good to put an email out to the to the Sakai user uh, and a Perio groups also, the Perry Teaching and Learning groups uh, for some of these things. Again, it seems still uh, heavily Sakai, which I don't think there's anything wrong with. It would be nice still though to figure out how we can expand a little bit. Documentation group update, that's probably not, we probably don't need that until after Sakai 11 code freezes here, which is not, uh, which is not here yet. Um, I did put a call a while ago to developers. I may do some digital outreach. Um, I did check, I'm gonna go ahead and send, I did get a list of the fellows just today from Ian, so I will send an email to the fellows inviting them. Uh, and um, I could certainly invite uh, Nico or ask him who would be a good person to invite in teaching and learning. Uh, it depends, I guess Nico is more of a technical side of things. 
Um, I know Marist uses uh, OIE pretty heavily, so we can maybe ask um, some folks from Marist if they'd be willing to present. They're doing a really cool thing with Diwali, which is a um, an Indian, uh, as in India, um, uh, celebration yearly, and they're doing a Diwali uh, week-long festival that has uh, mostly, you know, on campus it sounds like components, but also uh, has a virtual component. So um, I don't know if you saw that announcement. Louisa said she'll ask Didi. That's great. Thank you, Louisa. Um, any other uh, thoughts? Um, any demos of anything from the upcoming Sakai 11 or anything, you know, that just popped in my, my head? All right. Well, thank you for that. Again, I think probably it makes sense to put out a call for items also to the Aperio Teaching and Learning list and the uh, Sakai user list and mention some of these ideas and see if we have some expertise out there on open badges, if we've got some folks with LTI tools that might want to present and that sort of thing. Um, so I don't, let's see, where are we on the agenda? I think we're ready to wrap up and adjourn. So if there's any other comments or questions, this is our, uh, give a couple seconds to see. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I appreciate you, uh, appreciate you attending. Thank you, Matt, very much for presenting. Well, thanks, everyone, for your participation. Take care. And this meeting, uh, as I mentioned before, will be record. It's recorded, and we'll go ahead and uh, post this as well. Uh, the Morpheus meeting is coming up next. I think there's a Zerdi meeting after that, or Zerdi presentation at noon, and there's a accessibility meeting for anyone who's interested in that. So, lots of meetings today. For me. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye.